Awesome. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another installment of How I Shot It with uh, Magmod. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning when you join in. This is, uh, our, we're basically spending the day a little bit of time with Jeff Wilkins. Um, he's a photographer that's been using Magmod for quite some time. He's created some amazing images and he's graciously spent some time out of his day to day to uh, tell us how he shot some of his uh, some of his favorite images using Magmod and talk a little bit about his process. Uh, so thanks for joining us, Jeff. Thank you, Timothy. This is awesome. Um, I, I couldn't be more happy to be here. So uh, I'm excited to share my knowledge. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, just just fire away, Timothy. I'm, I'm happy to help. Awesome. I will do. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Jeff? Um, how long you've been shooting? Where you're from? Um, you know what? How long you've been doing weddings, and why you chose to do weddings? So give us a little oh. bit of information about yourself. Awesome. So um, originally, I'm from 20 miles uh, west of London, London, England. So um, I'm not the one with the accent here. I think uh, everyone else has the accent around me. Everyone <laughs> says. <laughs> but um, I I left England when I was about 20, 22, and I'm 44 now. So when I left England, I didn't really know what I was going to do. Uh, I just wanted to travel, and then I fell in love with Canadian Rockies. And uh, I decided to emigrate here. So I, I've been here uh, legally for 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 many years now. Um, and uh, so as a Canadian, and I picked up a camera. Like many people, like everyone says, it's you know you either started young or someone introduced it to them. But for me, it was just something I always had with me. It was one of those love things. But I didn't really know what I was doing. So I went back to school, and this is kind of pre-internet days when it was really taken off with all the courses. So I went, went back to school in, in uh, Victoria uh, to uh, an awesome school, and this is like 12 years ago. And it was then, I then suddenly realized, hey, this is, this is very cool. And uh, they introduced it with fashion aspect, and it was really about off-camera lighting, studio lighting. So then I started with off-camera lighting like 12 years ago. Um, and it was when literally you have to, when you say stick things together, or when I say stick things together, it wasn't more just sticking stuff. It was like literally sticking stuff on. And even the Velcro days wasn't quite there. And even to get the, the flash to work, I had to use uh, radio poppers, pocket wizards, anything that worked. So you had to buy something that to glue on, to stick on. And then you would have, I'd had a wedding and it was minus 36 at the top of a mountain. I was using off camera flash. Things would break, you, you just duct tape stuff on. And then I probably did this for like five years. Um, and then I decided I wanted to explore more natural based photography. I kind of um, had enough of the on camera flash, not because of the love, it was more, at the time I didn't know, it was more about, it was just so cumbersome. There was so many facets to it that I didn't, I just didn't want to lug several bags around all the time. And then I had a couple of kids, um, Charlie and Henry, who uh, is crazy at what kids do to you. They just, <laughs> they just, they really, if you're not soft already, they, they just soften you up. So, and then literally after two years of no sleep, I woke up and there was Magmod. It was like, oh. I, I'd been somewhere else. And, <laughs> and then I started straight away. I invested, you know, into you know, tons of your stuff, like right away. Cause I could just see the opportunities. And uh, lots of people are now doing off-camera flash, uh, that kind of that that stuff. And I felt like I had literally been asleep because if you have kids, um, you kind of might know the first couple of years of having kids, you don't really sleep much. You just go into this time warp. So uh, I, I, embraced... <laughs> I, I know that very well. Do you know it? <laughs> yes, I have three of my own, and I remember those uh, those kind of zombie-ish mornings for the first two <laughs> or three months of when before they actually slept through the night. And it's like, do I don't even remember those two or three months? So yeah, I, I know that very well. Exactly, exactly. And so then I was excited and I got the first generation stuff right away. And I didn't really care that, you know, the, the, the magnets at the time were coming out, they were sticking on stuff. It, it didn't matter because it, it created this freedom of um, being a, an, an artist, of, of freedom of artists. You could just do stuff quickly. Here it was. And people say that and, and, it, and it truly is like one of the easiest things you can do. So now the only thing that limits you is really how much sleep you have in the day. If you want to sleep for 10 hours in a day, then go for it. I'm one of these people, I wake up at like two in the morning, I, I have a thought of what I want to do and I jot it down because I know I won't remember it in the morning. And so I have an, a right. notepad next to my bed and anything that I want to do creatively or build a business or in my photography, just building, 
I, I always just write it down. So I, I always say to people, just write stuff down. And, and I think that's very, very, that's very key. And so one of my, yeah, ex- that a, yeah sorry, that's a great tip. Um, no, that's fine. That's a great tip, you know, in regards to, you know, helping with your creative flow, you have these ideas and attentively the, the business of the day can get to you or you get interrupted by something and then that idea kind of goes out the window and that potentially could have been an idea that really just helped your career take off or, you know, got you noticed or, you know, so writing those down just allows you to go back and, and evaluate those ideas and, um, and try them out just to see what it does and whether it works or not, um, at least, you know, and which is really awesome. So yeah. So everyone listening, that's a great tip. You know, if you have an idea, write it down so you can revisit it later uh, exactly. and, and explore how that's going to work. And and then you just said something that triggered my mind. Write a bigger idea down. If you got an idea, write write an idea because you're going to reach that normal idea. If you have that creative uh, idea, you got to get that out of your your initial brain thought and then go bigger. Um, if you want to dominate something, go for it. Like just don't think small. And it's not like big is better. It's not it's not like that. It's just you you, you need like consistent hurdles and, and bigger things especially in the creative world because you think of something and then someone's done it really really quick so um yes. write it down get it out of your mind and then and then just keep on going awesome so can you talk a little bit about how magma has helped you take some of those ideas um and and bring them to life like what about matt what is it about magma and what modifiers do you use most that has helped you bring those creativity your creativity to actual reality yeah oh my gosh well i've got a I've got tons of I've I've pretty much got everything you you sell, um, <laughs> and I think so. In my bag, I carry I have a creative bag. I call it, I have two bags. One is a creative bag, and then I have one is my um, my lens bag. So in my creative bag, these are the grids. These are my go to. These are my um, I wouldn't say these aren't my disposable. I I I'm definitely not like rich where. I can just throw stuff away, but these <laughs> these grids are, are are a must. So you, the first thing I would say is you got to have the grids. Uh, like the grids for me are uh, are is everything. So the grids, bingo, and you got to have uh, the gels, um, the the adapters. So these these here without these, uh, and obviously the actual grip that goes on the on the on the flash unit. So I use a Canon setup. Um, I'm not one of these where Canon's better than Nikon or it's Fuji. It's nothing like that. It's just when I picked up a camera when I was starting school like 12 years ago. Um, I just like how Canon felt in my hand. The the camera, the, the store owner said to me, um, um, which one do you prefer? And I said, uh, this one. You know, I really didn't know too much about it then. And then I shoot a ton of weddings, you know, hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of weddings I've shot. So the stuff like the grids are, are a must this sphere um these i've got like three four of these i basically have four flashes so i have four of everything um ap- apart from like um uh, from this i only have a couple of these because you only need a couple um yeah. but the grids are very very important so when i go to um well i can always talk about that when i go to a reception what i do but basically this is a must without these uh the grids uh, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, I agree. Grids are probably one of my favorite modifiers as well. I just, I love how just the the additional control you're able to get and just put the light right where you want it. It just adds a whole nother level to, you know, off camera flash and, and people's ability to, to control the light and really create images they want to create and not have to do a lot of adjusting or darkening or burning in Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, it really just allows you to be creative and then focus on how you want your final product to look, which is really awesome. Uh, we just exactly. did a shoot the other day, and um, and again, it was just using grids and gels, and I'm just always amazed at how amazing the photos come up with just those two simple modifiers. So, yeah, really cool. They're they're awesome. they're so they're, they're, they're awesome. Where to find you? Tell uh, people where we can find you, Jeff. So if you have a Facebook or Instagram. Uh, I want people to be able to follow you, you know, to follow your work and 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 just kind of see how you progress and some of the images you create as we as they move forward in their career as well. Absolutely. Thank, thanks. It's uh, so Je- Jeff Wilkins. Um, uh, so it's Jeff with a G, G E O F F, and Wilkins is W I L K I N G S. Um, so it's um, Facebook, Jeff Wilkins, and also Instagram is G W. Uh, I think it's G W Photography. <laughs> I love to have a check. I just I just do the handle all the time. That's kind of funny. But yeah, I'm on Insta- <laughs> in- Instagram and Facebook, and uh, and also uh, throughout this year. 
um, I have a, a new site coming up and with that new site is going to be, you know, with MagMod, um, how I did things behind the scene. Um, so oh, that's nice. something that's that's coming up. So um, that's it's just work in progress with, with that. But basically, um, it's going to be like little short videos using using the stuff as well. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for that. But that's it's, it's kind of I believe I believe in sharing. I think the wonderful thing about MagMod community is people actually share. It's not like this this anger or anything. It's just people are actually prepared to help people. And I love that community is awesome. So good job there. Oh, thanks. That's all. That's all Spencer's um, brainchild there. And he's definitely built a community that, you know, we like to foster and nurture and, and hope that other photographers feel is a, is a great resource for them to come and learn, not just about MagMod stuff in general, which of course it is, um, but just photography in general as well. If they have questions about flash or questions about, you know, yeah. whatever technical photography aspects, we just really wanted to create a community where people felt safe and, and confident to come in and ask those questions and get good solid answers from people who've been in the business for a while um, and, and be able to just want to share that information. So thank you for that. And I'm sure um, that makes Spencer uh, happy to hear. So I'm glad that yeah. you were able to tell us that. Cool. So let's jump into some photos. Um, I know your first one here is, uh, was one of my favorites. I just love the naturalness of the look. So why don't you uh, uh, bring that photo up and then tell us a little bit about your process and your, and your thought process and what the, what image you wanted to create and then how you went about creating that for us. That was awesome. So what I've done here, I've created a raw photo, um, the finished photo, and then I've actually done like a pencil drawing uh, just to try and give a, a, a three part to this. Okay, so the very first yeah, don't, is... Don't tell people a pencil drawing. Make sure, tell them it's a very technically, uh, <laughs> technical uh, drawing, behind yeah. the scenes aspect where you use, you know, digital renderings of where you put the flashes and all that other good stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's funny. So this is a raw photo. So uh, when I shot this, um, it was pretty much in the middle of the day. Um, a lot of my weddings, I don't have time to practice. You practice um, during your own time. I believe in weddings are very high pressure. Um, so these aren't staged um, shoots. You have limited amount of time and people invest not only just um, just money, but they invest their time. So they just want to hire you and feel relaxed. So part of my thing is actually to have a great relationship with a couple and just doing stuff technically behind the scenes. So a lot of this is I create this natural look for them um, and, I, and I photograph natural uh, photos like uh, without flash. So I do those, get those in my pocket and, and great. And then I can kind of step it up quite quickly with others. So this one here, um, I darken down the environment I used to use um, a meter, like uh, a handheld meter all the time. Um, but because of digital and how fast you can just work, I've actually dropped that, but I still carry it for some reason. So here was, I just dropped down the ambient uh, light. Ambient is um, the environmental light. So the light that you're seeing here, I wanted from this direction over here. So coming in from my screen right to, to the left and to create more of a, a sunset, Kind of feel to it so i threw a cto gel on so this is a full cdo uh, gel and my assistant is hiding behind um, ian and literally just pointing it so there's a grid um, being used here and the next one is the edited photo so there's the mm. before and then there's the after okay so just to give you uh, just a quick idea um you know with this I'm just going to go here and just to give you some specs on this very quickly, 100 ISO and I use a 50 mil lens at shooting at 1.8 and 4 thousandths of a second. Okay, so um, you can see the flash did fire with this and I use a 1DX system. So I'm using high speed sync um, with, with this setup. Um, I love like the 1.8, I can't really shoot at 1.2 um, um with a 50 mil because it's just not a sharp lens but i love the look like around one four um around there so this is what this basically gave me and this is more of the finished deliverable photograph so when you first take the photograph this is what you have in vision and i could have just done a quick tweak on this and it would have been fine but then i just finished off took away a couple of distractions nothing much probably a, a five minute edit and that was it huh. that's, and this that's quite amazing like, so you said and, you shot this in the middle of the day. So did you, this obviously wasn't towards the end of the day, which it looks like it's obviously a sunset kind of coming low across the, you know, across yeah. the horizon, coming in against a couple, but you mentioned that this was in the middle of the day. So is that? 
So Did this you is find a, a shady spot, and and how can you talk a little bit about how that worked? Sure. So down here, you're going to see it's four four twenty five in the afternoon, but it was okay. um, basically almost the middle of it was July first. So we're only a week after the longest day of the year. Okay. So the sun's still very very high. So to me, middle of the day here in the Canadian Rockies, you know, you it's it's it could be like from eleven to like four or five so the the sun is still very high and still very powerful okay hence why i'm shooting at four thousandth of a second at one eight okay um so um and sorry what was the question timothy so i just was uh, a lot of the people that were, are watching may be newer and they trying to understand how you're able to get a shot that looks like it's early evening slash sunset oh. as opposed to a sun high a shot that's high in the day um yeah. so um, I, I love how that you can create the sunset look, even though it's the middle of the day. Um, so talk right. a little bit about how you created that, um, so they can understand. Because sometimes, it is, you know, as wedding photographers, we may not be able to go back out at this time of day to get this shot. Um, so right. it's great to be able to know how to use these these tools to create the illusion of this shot to provide, you know, that extra variety for your clients. So absolutely, just talk that a little bit about uh, how you done how you did that. For sure, that's, that's that's a really good question because the now where you put the couple in the background. So the background here was dark or darkish. It was uh, the mountainside. So instantly, when I go to the mountainside, if I was on the other side of the mountain, it would be very very sunny, and it would be hard to overpower the sun. Um, so I put them on uh, an area where it's basically dark already, already stopped down. So it's a darker background. OK, so think of if I had a back, a black backdrop and that black backdrop is behind them. So if I was in a studio, I would just pull down the black backdrop and then I can make the background or gray backdrop darker very, very quickly. Um, but if it was looking straight out to the sun, it would be very, very hard to overpower that. I wouldn't say impossible, but very, very hard. And I only use like a, a camera uh, off camera flasher, just a, a small. Uh, just as a very very small system, I have four of these 600 XTs, but they only produce so much power. So you can over overpower the sun. So you got to think of your backdrop, okay? And then you got to have light coming through. So think of the shadow side. So now I'm on the shadow side. So I threw the flash on behind the subject, and a lot of people will say, you know, it's got to be a certain height, um, like up to where the groom is or the bride is, and the direction. But a lot of people don't understand as to why. Um, if I just threw that light, um, if I switched these guys around and threw it on, and the veil, the way the light, I wouldn't hit the bride uh, the same way. So you got to think the direction of travel. So this light is coming in um, sunset height with a full CTO gel on. So going back here, and it's just coming across. So you can see here, it's just capturing it. Without the grid, you just it's just, I wouldn't say impossible, but the setup was, I told my system, uh, Cassie, go behind them, point it directly uh, towards uh, the bride. Um, and um, I tell the bride never to touch, like the bride and groom, don't touch, because if you, if you touch noses um, here, then all you have is like one big long nose. So you've got to have separation, and then the light comes in, um, and then boom, it's done. It's that awesome. easy. Can you show us that um that your your highly technical drawing of your life setups real quick? <laughs> the, the, these are these are fully copy written. Can't be used. <laughs> uh, the uh, so basically this is what I used. Um so the grid, the gel, and the grip. And it's as simple as pointing towards the subject. So this is behind them, and this is my camera, my beautiful camera, um, pointing towards them, and the full CEO gel. Um, it's as simple as that. And you're going to see, this is my go-to in literally in 30 seconds. So you just, I always leave the grips on, on, on the, on the lens, on the uh, flashes. Always. That's a must. Yeah. And, uh, and if they break in the year, which I haven't had any break, but if they ever break, you just get some new ones. It's, they're just, it just speeds up your job. So boom. I agree. I have, I have my grips haven't left my flashes in four years since I uh, you know, <laughs> bought the first one. So um, I just rearranged my bag to make sure I could fit them in there with the, with the grips on. And that way I pull it out and just slap on the modifier and ready to go. 
Cool. Well, exactly. that was an amazing image. Let's move on to the next one, Jeff. Um, what I love about this one is, you know, it's a simple detail shot, but I love the way you you were able to make it look like it was just the natural lighting coming from the reception center. So talk a little bit about this one, and um, and again, and kind of maybe show us how uh, how you sure. created this one as well. Sure. So one thing with my style of of photography is I really do. Try, try not to over flash a subject or over flash anything. Um, I'm not going to say I don't like it, but when people just flash stuff, um, it, it becomes more out of control. I really try to complement the environment as if the flash was never there in the first place. And this was exactly how the environment was supposed to have been. And that's one of my things. So a lot of people don't realize I use a flash a ton during wedding days, a ton. But the aim is to cr try and create the look where sun or there might be ambient light in the reception doing something. So this one here, um, it was a phenomenal wedding and um, it was just a straight piece. And if I hadn't done this, it would just been a plain straight shot. You know, it would have been nice, everything. And literally uh, the grid was on the back and I'll show you that, that drawing in a second. The grid was on the back, pointed it towards um, uh, uh, the subject subject being um, the centerpiece or the uh, uh, knife and forks and the plate and the menu and then it just flowed through the centerpieces and it created this look so it was that is that easy but if you can do this for vendors for yourself people just love this yeah it's my first thought when I saw this was this was flash and it's it's quite amazing it looks just like it's the you know either the up lighting or the candle lighting from the table or maybe a spotlight hitting the table um, yeah. so very very well done which is i think it's important you know for people to realize that you know to shoot your details in a way that um adds some drama and some uniqueness but also matches with the natural environment that you were shooting in um, and this is a fantastic job phenomenal i really love exactly. that and you could do, you can put subjects around so this is by the way out of camera so this is here. Um, so if you look down here, it said the flash did not fire. Um, at some receptions, anyone that that works with flashes, sometimes you have to use uh, radio poppers um, because this was uh, a wedding that had a lot of uh, frequency, like a lot of different frequencies. And my flashes gave me a, it gave me a couple minutes of of a heart heart, heart attack actually because um, I'm used to just popping my flashes on, boom, boom, boom. But the Canon XD it doesn't work all the time. And especially yes, you can do like separate. Uh, controls or, or frequencies, but it doesn't work that it doesn't. It's not 100%. It's great, but it's not always there. So when you've got somewhere that there's lots of lights going on, lots of frequencies, DJ, everyone's got their own stuff. You got to have a backup. So my backup is my radio poppers. So literally, I stuck on the radio poppers, and um, um, and away I went. So this one here um, was literally 85 mil, 800 ISO. I could have gone higher with the ISO, um, but uh, but yeah, 85 gives that beautiful look. So this is straight out of camera, okay? So that's finished. Mm. Okay. So try and shoot good out of camera because then you then you just you just you just don't have much work to do afterwards. So very a very simple yes. edit. Okay. It's super nice. Show us the setup for that one. I'm sure people would love to see that. So half CTO gel. Um, um, I did half CTO by the way because um, full CTO often goes too yellow you know, at certain times. And then obviously you can color correct it, but th there was ambient light around. Um, ambient here was a setup within the reception, okay? So ambient is anything in my mind that isn't, um, um, that I'm in control of or I'm using, okay? So literally camera here, looking three three items, um, uh, just the, the gel, uh, the grid and, and the grip pointing towards the camera um, or the table and then pop. So can you see the direction now? So how, like, how high would you get, yeah, how would you say that, how high would you say the flash was in, um, in regards to the angle and the direction of how you were having it hit the table? Did you kind of have it low and grazing across the table or would you bring it up a little higher? Um, like it's fits coming from like, you know, some of the overhead lighting in the, in the venue. Sure. In between, in between what you just said. Um, so if I was, okay. Um, looking, say straight on here, it would be, and this is say 90, a 90 degree here, this angle, depends how your brain works, but 90 degree here, it would be coming this way. Um, so think of, I wanted to create a sun feel, like a warmer sun. 
So if it was middle of the day, I would have had the uh, flash more up, down. So it would be coming down. So you got to think, what look do you want from a photo? And here I wanted more of a warmer feel. And, uh, and that's why I put it on that angle. That's a great question. Um, so think you got to think of the angle of what you want. So if you wanted a strong sunlight look, you want to position that flash up higher as to what, what the sun is doing. Definitely. Nice. I like that question. Great. Again, great job. Great job. Uh, let's move on to the next one. So I know these types of shots are becoming a little more uh, mainstream. It's because they're a lot more yeah. unique and you know, clients are allowing access, photographers access to pretty much all parts of their day, which allows us to you know, kind of round out the stories we tell. Uh, and so people are always wondering how, how these types of shots are made. So yeah, let's talk about this one a little bit. Um, so this one here is, um, is in the shower. <laughs> so, so um, when I only had, I really didn't have long to photograph this. You don't have long on weddings again. Um, so this, this photograph, um, he was up for anything and uh, awesome couple, amazing couple. And so basically I wanted to create that blue look. Um, it's that blue, a natural blue um, environment, make the room colder. So that was, that was key. So I threw on a grid, um, I put a bracket and just hung it onto the shower area and uh, the grid and the CTO gel. And I put one full CTO gel on this. Now, that was my problem. I thought in my head, okay, one full CTO gel um, after conversion, you know, with a, with a, with a balance um, in Lightroom, everything would go blue. And because of the heat at the moment, when you're doing, doing everything, I actually should have put two, if not three CTO gels on. Um, and then after compensation, after doing the correct white balance on him, um, or I could have shot out a camera that way, I just thought, okay, I'll just quickly do it in Photoshop, do a, a tungsten uh, setting. Everything would have gone blue here, okay? So what I didn't do was allow for enough um, difference, okay? Does that make sense? Gotcha. Yeah, so sense. basically what you're saying is, um, in order to have gotten the blue you're wanting in camera, um, you would have had to drop your your tungsten down really, really low, which would have made your your natural light look really cool. Um, to compensate for that, you had to would have had to put two to three gels on your flash to be able to warm your subject back up to be the natural skin tones or to give him that kind of look you wanted um, out exactly. of camera. Um, and since you weren't able to do that, you had to do just in post. But essentially, you could have created the same look as you're fixing to show us in yeah. camera had you had you know those two or three other cto gels is that right exactly exactly and Wonderful. i do that all the, all the time at nights when i want to make an environment like at a reception um blue or on the outside and you just throw it on and normally one's enough because the sun's lower and it's cooler so when it's cooler you don't have to but this was like i mean with bright sunlight coming in and and uh, anyway i didn't compensate but you're absolutely right so shall i go to the next one Yes. So, ahead. so this is how I actually wanted it out of camera. And that was it. So it's a very, very simple, very, it's, it's really not hard to do. Uh, don't overthink it. It's just literally a flash on the subject. What's key is, <coughs> is you got to orchestrate it with the person um, to make sure that he's not going to block the light coming across on the subject. So I call it like a Rembrandt where the light's going to come across and hit his cheek, both cheeks. Otherwise he would just, look very dark so the Rembrandt kind of look where it's just hitting the cheek and um do you, do you see that so it's just yeah coming I definitely there. see that so his plans there. yeah and and then basically I had that blue so so this was exactly as as I wanted it um I just didn't compensate enough for it so the, no, these are awesome yeah and it's very straightforward like don't ever overthink it it's it's the most simplistic thing and so I don't even know I see my settings so did fire Canon 1DX. Uh, I have two 1DX cameras, by the way. I always use the same bodies. It doesn't matter whatever you use. I, I just recommend two, using two of the same um, because in the day, you don't have to think. It's just everything's the same. Um, right. Your, yeah. file color, your files are the same. Colors are going to be the same. That makes it very, very easy. So Everything is the same. So whatever, whatever it is, uh, I recommend two. And then That's 125th awesome. at 5.6. And then the ISO. So this is the key. I'm at 125. So 125th of a second, um, maybe, yeah. Does this help having the, uh, the data down here? Yeah, so I'm sure it does. Um, there's a, you know, a lot of people, as they learn, 
Um, you know, we we photographers that have been in the business a while know that you know settings really don't matter because then they're going to change you know based on your situation and where you're shooting. But as learning, people it's great for people to see them because it kind of gives them a baseline to kind of fiddle with and, and to mess around with. So uh, I love that you're showing the settings. I think that's uh, a great idea, uh, especially for the newer photographers who are just kind of trying to see where they should get a, a starting point to kind of recreate an yeah. image like this and then be able to learn from there and adjust from there. So yeah, thank exactly. you very much. Exactly. Anytime. And, just, and the big thing is is with, with settings is someone can copy i could copy the uh, uh the, the best photographer in the whole wide world with their settings but yeah the the, the photo is going to be different you know the same settings, exactly. same everything it's quite incredible and so looking at life so that's why i don't mind sharing because it's it's like it really doesn't matter um so this is right. a setup and you're, someone um, else is going to completely different look so yeah exactly it's this and that's why you got to like wake up at three in the morning with that better idea <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and that was that was basically the setup, the three uh, items, and and then my subject. Um, there it is. There. Okay. Super easy. What I love about all of these images you've you've showed so far, Jeff, is how how natural the flash looks coming through. You do a phenomenal job of making it look like it's a natural light. Like in this image, it's this. I could easily think this was maybe like a can light that was in the shower itself. That, you know yeah. that he turned on and was showering and you just compensated for you know that that natural light even though you're using flash and the same thing with the the table setting you know that's very easily when you look at it you're not thinking that he used flash you could easily think that that was some other natural constant light that you just you know shot compensated for and shot and then created in post production um, so I'm loving the feel and the consistency and pretty much all the images was images we've seen of how just so natural direction of the light um, and the way it looks coming through, which is important, I think, to, as a, in a feel of your, your images and, and to give that look. And some people like the real flashy look and some people yeah. like the, the more natural uh, flash look, which is perfectly fine. You know, everyone has their different preferences. Uh, and I just love the, the feel you're getting from these images. So let's move on to Thank this you. next one. I remember seeing this in the group. Uh, yeah. And I, I love these types of images. I love these, these big wide pullbacks where the, the couple is small in the image. Uh, I think it just creates a great uh, story for them uh, mm -hmm. to know, you know, where they were getting married and, and the environment they're in, and just be able to remember the whole aspect of the day. So, it's, exactly, and 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 I did do close ups of this couple, but when they spend thousands and <laughs> thousands and thousands, like tens of thousands, um, if not, okay, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars on a location like this, you better get the you better get the place. You know, it's like uh, I agree. you know, it's like so. Yeah, the close up ones are the 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 easy ones. Um, but when you got cars coming past, um, tourists, this is Canada Day 150. So Canada Day 150, and so we celebrated 150 years of Canada Day. So we're in like busy like time, like in on Canada Day. So getting this shot isn't that easy. So and then you got to orchestrate um, two people. So what I often do is have a walkie-talkie, um, a really good walk, two walkie-talkies. Do you know what a walkie-talkie? Do you call walkie-talkies? Yeah, we we call them walkie-talkies. Okay. Yeah, well, we're, see, <laughs> so we actually mean? call them telephones nowadays. But you know, <laughs> if you guys in Canada are still back there using walkie-talkies. That's totally okay. One day yeah. you'll have real phones, and then you'll be able to talk to each other like normal. So <laughs> there's, there's an there's an igloo behind here. <laughs> so often I have a walkie-talkie with my assistant or with the bride um, because I just can't shout. The time you shout across and you go, turn your head. And and then say, huh? <laughs> and then cars are going past. So if you just throw an open walkie-talkie on, and, uh, and you can converse, you say, hey, just uh, drop drop that hand, push, do this, and it's much much easier to converse. So when I took this ambient again, no difference to any other shot was ambient. So ambient light, um, I could have darkened it down because it's very dark at this point. Dark as being um, how how dark was it? One twenty fifth f eleven. So it wasn't dark at all. It was, uh, does that make sense to, to you, Timothy? It's like what I mean by yes. it wasn't dark. Okay, so, yes. so yeah. okay, so so this here is F11. So this is pretty much like bright sunlight. Okay, so I darkened it down to the point where um, highlights weren't being blown, shadows were still there. And now I introduce a flash um, within the subject to bring the eye detail to them. Otherwise, without it, you can see the driver, he's kind of dark. So, um, so with this, um, I had my assistant. Can you see the flash here? Oh yeah, it's just oh, yeah. barely there. I see. So, so my flash, 
So I should have done this. It's, it would have been hilarious. My assistant, she is incredible. So she's hidden behind this door on the inside. <laughs> and <laughs> she's holding the flash right here towards them. Nice. Okay. So what's crucial here is a number of things. He cannot be in front of her. There's got to be enough reflection to hit the driver so he's not complete silhouette. Um, and then they've got to have natural emotion within the inside. So when you've got to have um, the scene, the flash setting, um, not to overpower it, not to blow them out. And I had about, I would say, one minute to set this up, okay, completely. Wow. And I had a videographer who's awesome, but he's doing his thing. He's running around. He's coming in. He wants to get his shot, which is fair enough. So I'm like, okay, um, I've got like one minute to get this. And these, this, this couple, they were so in love and are so in love. They couldn't stop. They wouldn't stop moving. So videographer, cars going past, um, trying to get the right exposure, a number of things. You, you know, it's just, you might think, oh, that was easy. But there's actually a number of facets, you know. Um, and telling my assistant, by the way, up a little bit with a walkie-talkie. <laughs> <laughs> so the sure. finish now so do you finish, uh oh sorry so yeah so you said you had about a minute um for this photo do you think i mean obviously you could have created the shot without magma but do you think um do you think you would have been able to accomplish the shot in one minute had you not you've been using magma no way no way in fact i do not know that i could have even taken the shot without the magma setup I, I, I don't think it's, it was, it was possible because you just don't have the time. Um, the fact that you can just grab, this is the thing that people don't know. This isn't a sales thing for me. This is like helping people educational. Here it is here. Boom. The gel. Oh, there's no gel on this one. That. My assistant, can you go inside and hide yourself? You know, that was it. One, two, three. You know, it, it's it's like you don't even have to think. So I wouldn't even even have tried with the amount of time. And a lot of my weddings, I don't say the the, the higher end weddings. A lot of people think all well, my weddings are high end, but they're not. They some people can easily afford me as their po pocket change, and other people's, you know, they they spend less on their reception or something to try and get me. So and I I I respect <laughs> that, and everyone pays the same. So I still want to give the same for everybody that that hires me. It's very very important. Um, so the same service so this couldn't have been done i just so there would have been <laughs> i don't even know they, no they, I, no i completely agree because you know prior to being able to stack grids to, to narrow your beam you know this would have been created if you had one grid and it was throwing light still too far you would have had to take that one off and replace it with a narrower you know beam grid um and if that was, still wasn't narrow enough you'd have to take it back off so that's that's this time that you're wasting whereas you know, had you used one grid and that was still shooting a little too wide, you could just stack that second really fast, narrow it down even more um, without having to fiddle with taking things on and off. And um, I think that's one of the, the strengths and what's amazing about MagMod. You know, personally, you know, yes, I work for them, but I've been using them way before I started working with them. Is just the fact that you can change your light to what you need in, in literally a second um, and really just kind of create those photos really fast. So. Exactly, and 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 the, the the key is is not to overpower it. And how I set this up, one up. I'm pleased you said that because this here, um, I often use when I use the flash. I often use um, um, highlight enabled. So I enable the the highlight in, in camera because when I don't have time um, to, uh, you know, some this is a, you know your one DX. You've got a small screen. So you got, here you are. You got here, and you look on the back. You need some guidance sometimes. You need a little bit of help because otherwise, this is the old days. I would have gone over. This is uh, before I had kids. I would have gone over, metered, um, metered for them, metered for the environment, metered here, metered there, and got the shot. Ten minutes right. later, I would have got it. So literally, I need a little bit of assistance. So in camera, I turn on the um, uh, enable the the um, what's it called? Um, highlight it's priority. The highlight priority. Thank you. And then if it doesn't like boom off, like get rid of them, then I know I'm in the, the right ballpark very quickly, you know, and, nice. and, but this here, um, nothing was, it was just pretty much, I kind of know the settings, you know, literally 
so close to them. I think it was the 16th power. Um, boom, done. You know, and done. so this is raw. Awesome. This is raw. And then, do you want to see the finished? Yes, let's see the finished. So that's the finished. So nice. literally, I, I can't shoot straight for the life of me. I, I don't know what happens. <laughs> I really don't know. But here, I so can't that's... either. But it's because I have a crooked head. So like, <laughs> I have a, so my head's like this. So when I look it straight, I'm actually really crooked. So then I got to fix everything later. So yeah. <laughs> So, so this is this is basically the finished piece. Um, really wasn't too much done. Like it might seem a lot done, but it's just a, a basic processing. Um, yeah, it just um, just brought out the highlights a little bit more on them. Um, maybe a, a, this one a little bit more of a bigger edit. You can go further with edits, by the way. You can spend like two, three, four hours, and I and I do, and I have done. And the ones that go in my albums, I always spend like two hours on a on a photo that's going to go in. You know, because it might right. be a, a beautiful piece or a piece of artwork. So for sure, you got to think about where is it going to go and that kind of thing. But um, for this, it wasn't too big edit because you know I, I feel in camera it was fine. So this is raw, and then this is process. And then how I did that was there's the, there's a flash hidden inside, and then the the sphere. This is the thing. Um, a lot of people they don't use this, the sphere too much. Um, so the grid is almost like a diffuser in itself. I don't know how, I don't know if it was luck or, or what happened with that, but often I don't need to use the sphere, but because I was so close to the subject, I needed the extra diffusion. Nice. It's been a superb image, man. Love that one. That's one of my favorites when you posted it. I loved, uh, I was just, I loved the way it looked and the way the light, again, the way the light's hitting the couple, it's almost as if they turned on the little dome light, you know, in the back and it's just, that's the light that's, that's being used, which is fantastic. So exactly. let's move on to this next one. Uh, I've seen this one around quite a bit and, and it's, it's probably one of those kind of, it's taking, you know, we've got the hairspray shots and makeup shots, and this is probably one of the, the best makeup powdering shots I've seen. I love it. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. So let's talk a little bit about this one. Awesome. I didn't. I don't have the raw uh, with this. I was trying to dig them out, uh, and but I apologize for that. But basically, there's not much of a difference. Um, it was more. I just couldn't sh shoot straight, so it's a little bit crooked. Um, so here, I, I shot. This is where I do love using flash to give that flash look. Um, and I do love. I I do love the flash look in conjunction. And this is one of those times where you can use that flash look to bring the eye into a detail and because I, I think there's a time and a place for everything so it depends how the artist is feeling so this one here there was a, a dark wall um, it was a lot of natural light coming in so ambient light so this light here is ambient light okay so the, this is ambient light so I didn't want to drop it down too much so by dropping it dropping it down too much um, I didn't want to say go say 100 ISO at say f16 i can make everything dark and be in complete right. control of all the lights so what i wanted was to her not to be a silhouette um because i often do those silhouette ones but this one here i wanted some detail and then um this is and you're going to see this a couple shots this here is in conjunction with the makeup artist tap tapping the um the powder so she is tapping and then I have, um, I don't think my assistant's behind at this time, might have just been on a tabletop and literally the flash goes. And literally it was tap, boom. Mm. It's nice. It, so it was, it was that, that easy. And basically the grid behind to the subject is my beautiful bride. <laughs> and then the flash. The, the key is... So did you have the flash directly behind the subject or was it behind and a little bit to like camera right coming in at a little bit of an angle? It was it's pretty much hidden here, right right through her ear here because I'm look, trying to look okay. at the shadows coming through. Um, right. And you can see here, so it was probably about here, like where my cursor is there. Nice. But yeah, that's where the flash, the flash look is really handy because, you know, that's when you can create whatever you want that's super awesome cool well we're coming up on time here just a little bit jeff let's do um one more so i see you have you had a couple of one of a bride and one of a couple once you pick what your favorite was um sure. and just kind of talk about it real quick and then uh, we'll finish this up and say Sounds goodbye good. to our viewers and say thank you to you 
Awesome. So this one here is this is actually this weekend, um, and literally we were going past the, uh, the air condition or the uh, the vents where all the air is coming from the, the ground um, through, through the parkades, and it's all coming up. And I had no idea it was there. So literally, she walked past, and boom. <laughs> so there it was there. So um, literally, you can Marilyn see Marilyn Monroe kind of esque here. <laughs> exactly. It was, so you can see the grid. Um, it was literally simple. Uh, my assistant jumped in, went to the bag. Um, um, flash, and and away it went. Away it went. So and then the finished piece. So nice. it, it's it's pretty it's pretty incredible at what you can do. The reason why I use the flash here, by the way, I I also shot natural, and which I love the natural one as well. Um, but the problem was without this, um, she became more of a silhouette, and because it was, you got this sunny sixteen environment in the back here. Even though I shot down at um, you know f two hundred. Uh, shutter speed at 35 so ISO 50 by the way so you know really it, it's, it's quite uh, I'm creating kind of a I'm trying to balance between the foreground uh, as well so right. here we have the detail here and also in the back um, so then I use the flash to create that separation nice. as if the sun is hitting her yeah, that looks amazing. And I think that's well, we, a lot of your viewers, hopefully they're watching. Um, if you're some of the newer viewers, the reason that Jeff is using that lower ISO is he's wanting to control basically his ability to overpower the sun. So the lower your ISO, the more light you need on your sensor to be able to, uh, to expose properly. So what it essentially allows you to do if you place your bride in, or your, your couple or your subject in a darker environment kind of you can see from his original raw that she's standing in more of a shaded environment that allows you to create that environment to be even darker if you want it to by um, using either a faster shutter speed or a higher a higher aperture so it allows you to really darken it down so that you can bring that subject back out with flash um, even in a in a semi-bright day now there are going to be some situations where you're not able to do that just because of the nature of the sun that's hitting but um, being able to see where your subject can be put so that they're in a darker environment and then being able to use flash to bring them back out and create what you want um, is an important skill to learn. So um, just a real quick tip, if you're lower your ISO, um, higher your aperture and, and shutter speed can allow you to create the, the, the illusion of either early evening or dark um, to be able to give you that opportunity to overpower the sunlight. If that's correct, right, Jeff? Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, I, love 50, I love 50 ISO. 50 ISO, love 50 ISO. That's awesome. Perfect. <laughs> Well, man, I wish I, I could go continue on and, and talking about this stuff for, for for at least a couple more hours. But um, I know you've got a busy day ahead of you. You got your your boys. It's your boys' day, and thanks for taking time out of oh, yeah. your time with your kids to to spend it with us and here in the community. We really appreciate that. Um, and then, guys, if you didn't catch uh, Jeff's Instagram or his uh, Facebook, Jeff, why don't you repeat that real quick so the the people that joined us a little later can um, follow you if they like, and and maybe even reach out to you for questions if they have questions. So. Absolutely. My uh, so my Instagram is GW Photography. Um, so that's uh, the the uh, GW as Jeff Wilkins Photography is my Instagram, and then on my Facebook, um, which is going to become a lot more active actually this year. So I apologize. I'm just um, um, I'm just a little bit uh, slower there. It's Jeff Wilkins Photography. So awesome. it's just Jeff Wilkins Photography. Yeah, actually, it's Jeff Wilkins' photo. And, uh, but yeah, follow along, and uh, you're going to see some photos on there. And if you've got any questions, just just ask away. But I'm going to, I'm, I'm around. So thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. Yeah. I really appreciate it. I did have one question, real quick, Jeff. Sorry to, to uh, over interrupt you again. But um, someone in the community did ask um, for the shower shot. Um, she was wondering how you protected the flash. I'm assuming you just put it in like a Ziploc bag, or do you have a special waterproof bag, or did you just keep it out of the way of the we're very careful to keep it out of the floor of the water. How did you do that? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I did not protect my flash um, at all. <laughs> um, yes, logically you think you should, um, but the um, I'm of the mindset of I have four of these, um, and I really don't mind. I do not want to waste five hundred bucks for one photo. Okay. That's not the way my mind works, but I love get, trying to get different shots. So if it means trying something and then and if an error happens and my flash got ruined in the process, I might say to myself when I got home, I shouldn't have done that. But 
uh, um, you don't have the time. So it's literally, you see it, you weigh it up, it's not gonna get wet. Um, we had the water temperature on semi-cold, because in the morning, um, for some reason, it's always hot on wedding days. So we had it on semi-cold, so we didn't get so much condensation happening uh, in the shower. And then we just uh, we just hooked it on. You can get lots of lots of clips. I'm happy to to share those with you. But basically, clip it on, yeah. and and don't put it directly in the water. Otherwise, wow. you know, you're asking for trouble. But Definitely. it could have happened where it could have slipped, and I wouldn't have known until afterwards. And I would have hung my head low, <laughs> and said, "Oh no, oh no." <laughs> I might, might want to start buying young nose if I'm going to continue doing this, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, Jeff, again, thank you so much. Um, I hope uh, hope our viewers were able to take a little bit away from this. And again, thank you for your time um, and spending a little bit of it with us this morning. And look forward to seeing more of your work. And thanks for being, you know, a part of our community and and sharing and and showing the images and just answering questions. You know, that's it's people like you that are key to making the community what it is. So I really appreciate that you're spending time in there and helping out. And um, you know, look forward to seeing you some more. Awesome. Thanks, Timothy. Thanks, Magma. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Thanks, awesome. everyone. Take care, guys. Take care. Take care.